Good morning, boys and girls, from Black Powder Headquarters and the Bojangles Studio, high on Sassafras Mountain, CDA presents Real Tree Radio. Welcome to a brand new, unused Saturday morning. Good morning, boys and girls from the mountains in North Georgia at Black Powder Headquarters. Bojangles presents O'Neill Outside. Welcome to a brand new unused Saturday morning. Welcome to the program, everyone. We've got another hour of outdoors headed your way. We hope you'll join us. You can listen to O'Neill Outside on WSB, over 38 states, the east of the Mississippi River, on the Sports Broadcast Radio Network, all the way from California up to the East Coast and throughout Texas and Central America and Central America in the Midwestern states. I'm sorry, I get carried away. Welcome to the program. You, if you'd like to join us this morning, it's 404-872-0750 in the Atlanta area. That's 404-872-0750 or outside the Atlanta calling area, 800 800- 972-8255. Jason Byers is engineering at the WSB studio. Karen Green and Brian Green are engineering the studio from Peachtree City, Georgia. And Woman Williams is here with me. It, if I pronounce incorrectly and stumble, it's because I'm tired. I'm old and I had to get up at 3 o'clock. So welcome to the program, everyone. It's seven and a half minutes after the hour. It's my pleasure to tell you that this program is brought to you every Saturday morning by Tough Shed, Striplings, Horsetown, Realtree Camo, Hayes Auto Dealerships, Fire Aid, that little can right there, and uh, Timbuktu Outdoors, Cherokee County Toyota Works Tools, and the Whitetail Institute's quite a lineup, isn't it? It certainly is. Yeah, we need to go to Striplings. We're out. Yes, we are totally out. Yeah, we're we we need to. I it's a I long had, way, but it's worth it. I wish I was wishing I had some uh, Brunswick stew for tomorrow. Oh, yeah, that's good Brunswick stew. Yes, they have it at Striplings. is. It mm-hmm. really is. Okay, we're gonna buy a couple of gallons this time and freeze it. Uh, okay, it freezes well. It does. Yeah, that's that's really good Brunswick stew. You go to Striplings. Uh, Visiting Striplings in Bogart, Georgia, is a personal experience. It really is. 404-872-0750-800-972-8255. First break coming up. This is O'Neill outside, and we'll be back. Welcome back. Telephone numbers for O'Neill outside, 404-872-0750-800. 9728255. He's been holding on quite a while. Let's go ahead and get to Alan. He's calling from Lilburn, Georgia on O'Neill Outside. Good morning. Alan. Good morning, O'Neill. Miss Gail. Hey, good morning. How y'all doing this morning? You bet. We're doing great. Uh reason I was calling, um, of course we're putting away all the hunting stuff and getting the fishing stuff ready. You bet. And um I was going through an old catalog, and I run up on a, a piece of electronics, and I wonder if you ever used it or even even recommend it. It's, it Fenwick makes it, or either Lake Systems. It's called a color selector. Have you ever used it? I remember yet? that. I haven't seen one of those in a long, long time, but, yes, I have. I, I'm familiar with that, a color selector. It told you what color bait to use on the on the particular color water. Well, it gives you the color, the pH, and the temperature. Mm-hmm. You know, and then the, the probe, depending on the, the color of the water, you know, tells you if it's stained, muddy, or or clear, you know. Yes. Um, I've, been, I've been able to find them on eBay, but, I, you know, Bass Pro or nobody like that carries them anymore. How about that? I hadn't heard that. I hadn't heard that terminology or about that product in probably 15 years. Well, it, it was it came out in '84, mm-hmm. and because I can find it on eBay, but you know, most of those are used. Um, but I was wondering if you'd ever seen any, or even if Fidwick even makes it anymore. No, I, I I never used one, but I just heard about it, read about it at the time. I thought it was a pretty good idea. Uh, 
I, I personally stick to a little bit more basics than that, but uh, I'm, why not? Let it work. Yeah. Well, the other thing I was calling about is our update on the deer season. Um, I was I had the pleasure of watching two young men get their first deers this year. One young lady got her first buck ever, and uh, two ladies that are in our club, um, one in October wouldn't even go in the woods, and now we can't keep her out of the woods. Oh. <laughs> um, and um, watched them get their first uh, buck this year. Um, and to me, O'Neill, it's been the greatest hunting season ever, just getting to watch that. That's Sitting wonderful. And watching that happen. Yeah, builds you up some um, lifelong partners, huh? Well, the big thing is it's the getting to watch these people actually experience the outdoors. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I see these people and hear them spend all this money on, you know, going to see a psychologist and all this stuff. Go sit in the woods for a day. It's the best medicine you can ever have. I agree. I agree. Boy, that, so, that's, uh, you had a wonderful deer season. That's for sure. And, uh, my goodness, that's, uh, that's good to hear. And your description of it is very well taken. Um, uh, and the last thing, O'Neill, um. A boy in our camp told us that you're changing the name of the of the show and moving to a new date. No, that's kind of odd. We didn't know about that. <laughs> no, we didn't know about that. Uh, okay, because <laughs> okay, that's the way he was saying that. He heard in June y'all were changing the name to a more. The script, I said, well, hell, how does anybody going to know what it is if it ain't O'Neill Outdoors? So. <laughs> well, it's uh, in July of this year, very possibly in July of this year, we may have a show on Sunday morning, and it'll be called Sunday Outdoors. Oh, okay, maybe that's what he was trying maybe. to say. Maybe. That's, that's not decided yet, but we're going to give it a try, I think. I said, well, if he leaves Saturday morning, I said, well, how are we going to know what to do? <laughs> well, O'Neill has a big mouth with lots of recommendations. Oh, it's the best show on TV. Well, you're very so. kind, sir. You're very, very kind. <laughs> yeah, Alan, you, uh, yeah. you gave, this was a great call, and I do appreciate you giving us that description of your deer season. It worked out just great. Thanks a lot, pal. Well, Y'all have a great weekend, and God bless you, bro. You bet. Glad you called, pal. There you go. Now let's talk to Mac. He's calling uh, with the Ram Fishing Report. Good morning, Mac. Good morning, O'Neill. How you doing? Lovely. Tell me about your week and what's coming up. Well, we've got a good report. Uh, the Ram Report's a good one. Fishing's good. You know, it's really amazing. We've talked about this a lot over the years, O'Neill, how we fish for fish in, in reservoirs all over the place, but I, I've gotten so much feedback from guys on different lakes. The umbrella rig, uh, the umbrella bite rather, just exploded in the last few days. Oh boy! I'm getting feedback from guys on Smith Mountain Lake, Texas, uh, the Tennessee, all the lakes there in Tennessee. It's amazing. But if you're going to Lanier today, that's been the big bite. Uh, if you can find you, all we're doing is very simple. And if you use a Lake Master chart, this is really easy. If you'll highlight the chart around at 30 feet and just go from hump to hump. The fish are piled up on these submerged islands, big groups of stripers, and you can pull a rig over and use them to bite on each rig. It's great. Now, what's the name of the rig that you sell, the umbrella rig? It's just sold as a Captain Max, and the, the one that's doing best, because you need the weight right now, is the, is the forearm with nine baits. A nine, it's forearm, three-ounce rig. It's got nine bucktails. Okay, that to the, to the fish, to the school of fish, uh, to the stripers, the game fish, that's like a school of bait swimming by, isn't it? Absolutely. It emulates a school of bait, and I think it's very reactionary is why it works. And this, what we're doing now, you go over these high spots, and you'll see a group of fish 30 or 40 feet, or 30 or 40 fish in a pile. And I really think what happens is when they're, they're pretty densely bunched up and they see the rig coming past, I think a lot of times they eat it because they think if they don't, somebody else will. It's oh, it's, com it's competitive, no doubt. And then you've got this little school of minnows swimming by, and the fish look at it and say, well, I better get on that. Or, <laughs> Fred over here will so he he pounces on it and it's uh it's a really good technique and it's been really strong this week both for numbers and size so or let me ask you a question in pulling an umbrella rig with nine baits on it uh what's the most number of i know it's tough to do what's the most number of 
fish you've ever reeled in at one time? Most I've ever caught one was five. You caught five stripers on one on one bait? On uh, one rig. Five Wow. Fish. Now normally what happens is if you hook big fish, when you get multiple fish on an umbrella, they kind of forget about you and they fight each other and they usually pull the hook one will pull the hook out of the other one. Sure, Doubles sure. Pretty common. And when I caught five, they were all small fish. It's hard to keep five big ones or even three big ones hooked up on a rig. But doubles, doubles are common. We get those pretty regularly. And that well, all depends on how densely the fish are packed up. If you pull it through a school of stripers and they're really thick, yeah, a lot of times you'll get multiple. Sometimes you get two fish on each rig, that kind of stuff. Wow, man, oh, man. What what a thrill that would be. Are you going out today and this weekend? Is it I'm not today. Probably go tomorrow. I've got to, actually got a wedding to attend today, so I'm off the water. So well, good for you. Yeah. Well, I don't know. As good as fishing is, I'm I'm wrestling with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, uh, people can go to. Uh, I got to get out of here, but people can visit O'Neill outside, and the Mac uh, fishing report is there, and how to get a hold of Mac, and when to book him up to go fishing. How about that? They can find us, book a trip, find the rigs, and you see the Ram Fishing Report on there in detail in print every week. And, uh, hey, you're putting some great videos on Facebook. Well, thank you. It's uh, I got some people that, that, that help me edit that that make me look way better than I really am. Please. Oh, no, you you <laughs> you know, every time I look, go to there, the rods are all bent double. Well, thank you. That's what we're working on. We're going to really try and pump up the content on the site uh, to help people to illustrate the things we talk about every week, to make it practical, to apply to what you're doing in the boat every week. That's the intent. That's right. Well, you've got the, you've always had, the, your your guide trips have always been a teaching tool uh, for me every time I go with you. It's been a couple of years. We need to plan a trip, I guess, don't we? I think we do. I think so, too. We might do that right, pretty buddy. soon. That sounds like a winner. All right, buddy. Glad you called. Ram Hayes Fishing Report from Mac Farr, and I thank you, pal. Thank you. You guys have a good weekend. Everybody be safe on the water. You bet. Congratulations on the wedding. I'll see you later. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. There you go. 21 after the hour, and uh, we've got to get out of here for a minute. Then when we return, we will have the uh, Silent Hero Award, or not, description, the Silent Hero description, and it's a very unusual one, and I want you to stick around for a few minutes through the break. And when we get back, it's the the silent hero description brought to you by Fire Aid, and we'll be back. It's my privilege. Welcome back. It's my privilege right now to list for you, describe, to read to you the silent hero description. It's brought to you by Fire Aid. You need Fire Aid in your home, the shop, the truck, uh, the equipment room, the furnace room, uh, the equipment. <laughs> You need a lot of cans of Fire Aid. It works. And here's our description. Well, I almost messed that up, didn't I? I did mess it up. Well, as a matter of fact, yes, you did. Yes, I did. All right. Huntsville, Alabama, 2017. A paramedic and an off-duty firefighter who both noticed a burning truck on the side of the road stopped to save the man who was inside. Now, each hero has elected to keep his name private. That's his option and decided it was their job to do, and they did it, and they didn't want any recognition, so I don't have their names. The paramedic was driving an ambulance on the highway when he saw a burning pickup truck that had crashed into the trees after running off the road. The paramedic pulled over, ran to the truck, broke the window with his arm, and then after after failed attempts to open the door. That's right, the door, you know, in a wreck, the doors will lock up. He broke the window with his arm, which was pr quite a chore, evidently. And an off-duty firefighter, who was also passing by, stopped to help the paramedic, and they administered CPR to the victim and got him going. An EMS uh, true crew finally showed up in just a very few minutes. The paramedic, and they, they rescued the man, and the paramedic who had pulled the driver to safety was also treated for smoke inhalation. That's the epitome of the silent hero. He didn't even want his name or their names mentioned. And the silent hero description is brought to you by Fire Aid for fire, firefighters. 
EMTs, and they are indeed silent heroes. Every one of them. You betcha. I understand them. Not um, that's very admirable. Not wanting mm-hmm. their names mentioned, but on the other hand, people are so grateful for them that mm-hmm. they, you know, you just you you want to hug them. You want to grab them around the neck. That's right. I can't wait to read next week's. I already got it picked out. Oh, great. Oh, yeah, Great. this is a really good one. Look forward to that. The next week, and yeah. thank you to those two Imagine men. breaking the window in a car or a truck no, with your I, elbow. No, I can't imagine the uh, adrenaline that was pumping through uh, because that's very hard to do is to break it. Hard to window. break it with a hammer. Yeah. He broke it with his elbow. Whoa. Bang, like that. Okay, now let's talk to, he's been holding on quite a while. Let's talk to Richard calling from West Virginia. Good morning, Richard. How's it? I've been listening to the show for a while, and I heard it. You say that you do the show from the North Georgia mountains. Yes. And I'm just sort of picturing you being in some cabin, even though it's Atlanta. I mean, where could you say you're located? It seems like that you're like located maybe by some lake uh, up in a up in a secluded cabin uh, about 50 miles from Atlanta. That's pretty close. It's about uh, 55 or 60 miles from uh, the Atlanta area. It's close to a little town called Jasper. And if you want to look it up, it's uh, it's our little cabin is next to the Dawson Forest and next to the Amicalola State Park. We can kind of see the lodge from uh, our little, we've got eight acres. And uh, it's on a little, little, it's paved road now. It used to be a dirt road, paved road. And, uh. We're kind of secluded a little bit. It's a, it's a secluded area of the mountains, so that's what we call it. And that's where you live. You live up there. Yes. Yes, indeed. That We live here, and we produce the show. Uh, you know, just got a couple of computers and a couple of desks, and that's it. So uh, it, it, it's nice. We've lived, we've owned the property for 15, 16, 17, ye- 17 years? Yeah, 17 okay, years, and we moved up here too. Fast thing. It has to do with... A certain name, I just wonder if you know the origin of it, because it's a name you got to watch what you say on the radio. It's called Buckhead, Georgia. Buckhead. Do you have any idea? You Buckhead? Where they come with, with a name like Buckhead. Uh, well, that, as I understand, well, there's two Buckheads. One is in North Atlanta, so, uh, uh, metropolitan area of, of Atlanta called Buckhead. And there's a Buckhead City, if you will, or town, which is uh, about 50 miles east of Georgia along uh, I-20, and it's near Lake Oconee, and that's called Buckhead. It's a little small town. And both of them are named for, as you can well imagine, a Buckhead. So there you are. Oh, it takes care of that. Okay, a question I called about. I heard you say that you're tired of cold weather, and so am I. And I've heard this for years, that uh, the cold weather is good because it gets rid of bugs. And I never did know exactly what that means. Does that mean you won't have a uh, you have a limited amount of uh, gnats or grasshoppers or what all does that mean? If that is if it really if it really is true that cold weather gets rid of bugs, what exactly? Well, does it, that mean? it it doesn't get rid of the fact that they've laid their eggs and so on, but uh, it does indeed get rid of a lot of. Uh, in the winter, of especially cold winter, does get rid of the adults. They don't live through the winter. They have short lives in any case. But, yeah, I, I've always heard that it's better, but I don't have any scientific knowledge or experience to be able to confirm that. What do you think, honey? I think we should ask Hal Coleman. Hal Coleman should call sometime. He could, uh, he could, he's a, is a, a bug guy, an entomologist. I think that's the way you say uh, it, yes. I think he's an entomologist, mm-hmm. and he knows about all that sort of thing. Attention, Hal Coleman. Give us a call. So you got a half hour to call in. Okay, good. <laughs> I hope go. he does. <laughs> Very good. I hope he does. Hey, thanks, good, Neil. good call, Richard. Stay in touch, pal. Okay. You bet. There you go. It's 31 after the hour. We've got time here. Let's go ahead and let's talk to, let's talk to Hank the Yank. Good morning, sir. Hey, buddy. How are you? Good. Are you going to watch the Super Bowl? I probably will. Okay. I, I probably will. Okay. I'm, a, I'm rooting for the Giants. Uh, okay, yeah. I'm not surprised at your answer. Uh, yeah. it, it's really cold up there. What, honey? Oh, Giants. I was thinking it's the New York Yankees you don't like. Is that correct? Uh, Gail, uh-huh. that's, that, that could earn you a trip to the detention center. 
<laughs> I live and breathe New York Yankee baseball. Okay, well, there's one of the New York teams you don't like. Uh, you know, I like all the New York teams. I'm not a, I'm not an anti-New York guy, but I'm a, I'm a Yankees fan and a Giants fan and a Knicks fan and a Rangers fan. I'm there you are. He's a fan. New York City team. And a Georgia Bulldog. And a huge Georgia Bulldog. <laughs> yeah, there you are. I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe when uh, the two New York teams played uh, baseball yeah. – Teams played each other. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a Mets guy. That's, oh, that's it. Okay, it. Yeah. I, there you go. I, 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 I'm sorry, and I, I retract my statement. It's, it's, it's no, quite... no apologies necessary. You know, Ooh. yeah, I, I'm, 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 you know, Yankee baseball is America's team. <laughs> yeah, and quite frankly, it's not the New York Mets; it's the Meadowland Mets, isn't it? No, it's the New York Mets. Okay. It's short for the Metropolitans. Oh yeah, the old Metropolitan Casey Stingle. AC Stengel. So you bet. So listen, I don't. I'll give you a quick fishing report, like literally twenty seconds. Okay. Fishing is kind of tough for most guys on the pond right now. A lot of the guys are not fishing. The bait guides have slowed down, and the fly guys have slowed down. But I will tell you that you can catch a few fish if you can find warm water, and the water is all over the lake is between 45 and 47 degrees in most places. Mm-hmm. It's a typical cold North Georgia winter, and that has slowed the fishing down tremendously. But if you can find the pockets of warm water in some of the creeks, both north and south, you can catch some fish because that's where the bait is. Okay. All you need to do is find water that's a degree higher. You find 48-degree water temperature, and you'll find some fish, whether it's stripers or spots. That's, that's the ticket. For the next few weeks, so that that's what's going on in our lake right now. Okay, and that and you should I understand too. I always prescribe to it. Uh, the warmest water is on the northwest side of the lake, and that may be true. Mm-hmm. There's probably some truth to that. I, you know, I I'll be honest with you. What I do is I just drive around, and you know, on a, when I know it's getting cold and the fish are not feeding the way they normally do, I do less fishing and I do more driving, trying to find pockets with warm water. Gotcha. And then when I when I find that 48 degree water, that's where I stop, take out the fly rods, and start fishing. It's just that simple. And you will see this time of year, you will actually see that bait. That bait finds it. I don't know how they do it, but they find that warm water. They really do. Mm-hmm. It's really incredible. I but, believe yeah. Henry. Correct me if I'm wrong. It was it was the month of February, the first time you took me to Lake Lanier, and I caught the largest striper I ever caught on a fly. That's right. And we were fishing the back of a cove in mm-hmm. some really shallow water, and we had found some warm pocket water. And that's really what's going on right now. It's, it's a, it's, it, I'm not telling you it's the easiest thing in the world to do, but I, I, I'm just saying that if you want to be successful, that is what you must do. So, But listen, here's the good news. This okay. is what I really called about. Okay. The, the, at the Infinity Energy Center today is the Atlanta Fly Fishing Oh, show. boy, that's so good. I, yeah, I want to let all our listeners know it's from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., and if anybody, it is one of the most interactive shows. There will be tons of things to do for the kids. You can watch fly casting demonstrations. You can watch fly tying demonstrations. There will be a lot of PowerPoint things going on. Uh, anything from trout to stripers to bass to muskie. You name it, carp, there will be something going on all day long. There are probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about eight to ten seminars being uh, put on every hour. And you can, if you or a child wants to learn how to, you know, how to take a fly rod, go out there and whip it around, this is the perfect place to do it. All right, give uh, give me the location again quickly. It's at the Infinity Energy Center in Gwinnett. It's the old... Know, where the gladiators play. Right, uh, across from Bass Center. Pro. Across from Bass Pro. Okay. And it's 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Good. I wish I could go. I can't, but uh, you enjoy it. I know you will. I got to go, pal. Yeah, we'll have a good time. Have a great weekend, folks. You bet. We'll see you soon. There you go. This is O'Neill. We'll be back. Well, you're listening to O'Neill Outside. we got a very special caller right now at 40 minutes after the hour. Let's go now and talk to... Sergeant Mike, good morning, Sergeant. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning, O'Neill. How are you doing? This sir? is uh, DNR Sergeant Mike Barr. That's correct, with uh, Georgia Department of Natural Resources Law Enforcement. Division. Good deal. Before we get to the subject of your call, uh, expand on the following about a free lifetime license drawings. 
Can you tell me about that? Uh, check, check our website for information on that, and um, there's uh, some good opportunities. Uh, licenses uh, have changed over the past little bit, as you're uh, familiar with, mm -hmm. and uh, the great, great information on that um, uh, that you can get on our website. You can look at our website through GA. D-N-R-L-E for Georgia Department of Natural Resources Law Enforcement okay. org, and uh, go right to the license tab, and it'll assist you with that. Okay. Now, what's the subject of your call this morning, Mike? Well, I, I really, uh, I know you've got uh, callers out uh, that extend way beyond Georgia, but uh, this is a little bit related to, to Georgia, and we have a, a new opportunity for those people that are very uh, strong supporters of conservation and law enforcement. And it's a new opportunity with purchasing a specialty plate tag for your vehicle in okay. Georgia. Um, the law enforcement division has developed a, a tag for those sportsmen that uh, that want to show their support for game wardens. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's out there available for pre-purchase. Um, the, the way the system works in our state, we have to come up with 1,000 pre-orders in order for the tag to be there for long term. And uh, in that, uh, if, if you haven't seen the tag, again, go to our website on that very first page. Uh, if, you'll, if you'll scroll down a bit, you'll see where the, the license tag uh, shows that um, it, it's an artwork that's been developed by a game warden. Mm -hmm. And it shows from the mountains all the way to uh, to the lowlands of the coast. And it, uh, it Good idea. literally says support Georgia game wardens. And the, some of the funds from the purchase of the specialty tag go directly to the department, to the operations and supporting the day-to-day -day activities of the people on the field. That sounds great. What a great idea. It is. Uh, you know, um, every day that, uh, that, that we're out, we encounter people that um, – you know, come up and, and ask us, uh, you know, how the day's going and, and really thank us for the for the job and, and realize the importance of protecting the natural resources. And they, they just really are, are connected to that to that game warden and especially the game wardens that are in their county and, and work hard for them every single day, hunting, fishing, boating and environmental related especially. And this is this is just a, a way to further support your game warden. Show that as you display it on your vehicle, or maybe display it on your boat trailer. Certainly, those people that may be. Oh, that's a good idea. You know, um, but uh, it, it is a good way to show your support. And again, uh, that that money goes directly to operations for our department. So we're we're excited about this tag, and we're really encouraging people to go ahead and, and pre-order. Regardless of where you're at on the cycle for your tag, you can go ahead and pre-order, and once those 1,000 number is reached, um, the, the application will then be forwarded uh, back to you, and you can uh, complete your registration process and get your tag. Good deal. That's great. That's great news. And uh, Now, you correct me if I'm wrong in this because I, I, I make a lot of general statements. Is not your job as game warden one of the most dangerous jobs uh, in in law enforcement? Well, you know, we're we're by ourselves um, mm -hmm. a great deal of the time, minus those times that we're patrolling on the water. Um, in in conservation officers are, are few in numbers, as you know. We have roughly in Georgia about two hundred officers throughout the state. Um, you know the the danger portion of it is is um, doesn't doesn't come much from anything related to game and fish, but sometimes comes into those other things that you bump into the other criminal activity. Mm -hmm. you know, we're law enforcement off the pavement, so we're we're out in those remote areas where if there's a potential criminal there, they're absolutely not expecting to see a law enforcement officer. That's right, and they're those, usually armed. Those type encounters can be, can be a little iffy. And, uh, you, and they're armed, and often it's at night. Yes, sir. And it's tough for you to call for backup, too, isn't it? Well, it, it, uh, it may be a situation that um, not only um, are we in a remote area, but uh, frequently we're on foot. We control Ooh. by all-terrain vehicles, so we mm -hmm. may be in a location where even when we call for backup, that uh, that we, we they may not be able to get to us as quickly as, for example, some of the metro police departments. 
But don't misunderstand me. We do get strong support from almost all counties in the state, Mm -hmm. from their law enforcement, from the state patrol, and really law enforcement um, in general is a a very tight group that really protects each other and backs each other up at every opportunity. All right, so our audience can in Georgia can uh, look it up at the DNR website and uh, order a tag, and when you get a 1,000 of them ordered, then it becomes reality, huh? Yes, sir, it, it does, and uh, then that will start a process that you can renew uh, on a yearly basis and, again, so show your support for game wardens. And, you know, the, the, there's just so many sportsmen that are ethical and really want to preserve our natural resources, do the things that, that we enjoy doing in the hunting, fishing, boating world, and do it the right way, and, and that's the – that's the person that's going to reach out and say, you know, this tag is supportive of something that I'm really uh, a, a pro fan of, and, and that's conservation law enforcement. You bet. Thanks for calling, Mike. Yes, sir. It's been good to talk to you. You sir. bet. Stay in touch with me. Let me know how it goes. Okay. Turkey season's coming up, and tell your your uh, guys going fishing this morning, wear that life jacket. This cold water, water environment's the time that you really need to have it on. Absolutely. See you later, pal. Yes, sir. You Thank betcha. You. It's uh, I, I, maybe I should have mentioned it, but uh, I think most of the time, I mean, the stats prove out that most of the time uh, the people drown from falling out of a fishing boat, uh, they're middle-aged and their zipper's open. Oh, wonder what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> what do you got going on Facebook, baby? Oh. Uh... Anything special? No, let's see. Just someone wanted to know if you had ever taken a, a turkey with a bow, and I told him no, I that you're not. not a bow hunter. No. Nope. That Travis is the bow hunter in no, the family. I, uh, mm-hmm. What else you got? Um, let's see. Um, I, I don't see anything else that I haven't already answered. Okay. Or, uh, somebody wanted to know about your favorite box call. Okay. That's uh, a turkey. Woodhaven call. I like box calls. Yeah. Uh, I use a box call more than anything else because if I use a mouth call, I sound like a duck. I'm just not good at it. And uh, uh, my being able to match that sound, I'm just not good at it. Uh, box calls are louder also mm-hmm. to me. So I use a box call, and I can stay out of trouble with that. But otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, I sound like you'd, a quacking you'd, duck. You'd scare them off. <laughs> O'Neill's in the woods. Let's get out of here. Well, but... There is always the fact that uh, we can be going down the road and we have turkeys up here and we blow the horn at them and they talk back to us. Yeah, that's yeah. A shock gobble. I mean, how bad can you be? <laughs> well, they're they're uh, that's that shock gobble. They answer to uh, crow calls and uh, other turkey calls, and they answer. Uh, I know uh, in South Georgia, at a place I used to go. I've forgotten the name of it, but they have peacocks, uh-huh. and that screaming peacock in yeah. the morning, and the turkeys always answer that. You know, it reminded me, so I might as well say it while I'm thinking about it. Okay. Uh, I didn't tell everybody that I I saw a bald eagle in our backyard. Oh, yes, and no, that was a golden. A, a golden eagle, golden well, whatever. Eagle. And I thought I was seeing things, and I ran upstairs to confirm it with you, and you didn't think I had either. But then we found out that uh, we live in the um, basically on the same mountain as uh, Big Canoe, mm-hmm. and, uh, and we're not that far from Berry College. And they do definitely have a, a nest over there. Mm-hmm. And there have been several sightings of uh, the eagle down at Big Canoe. That's right. So I'm sure now that that was an eagle that I saw out there. It a was big a bird. Mu- it was huge. That's what caught my attention. Because I was down in the basement, you know, and you're on ground level down there because, you know, we live on a hill. And I looked out there, and it was just absolutely amazing. And I thought, that's the biggest turkey I've ever seen. <laughs> and he took off. <laughs> yeah. With about a four-foot wingspan. Yes, yes. And went up into another tree. Of course, by the time I got to you, it was it was gone. But uh, it was that around. was quite exciting. Yeah. I'd love to find the nest. It's probably, God knows where yeah, it is. Somebody is correcting me and tell me it's a bald eagle over there. Yes, I know that. I was just talking about the fact that there's eagles. Yeah, they're eagles. We got bald eagles around Lake Lanier and lots of different places, but uh, also that what you saw was a golden. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're it's just a great big 
white headed buzzard really <laughs> it was yeah, Benjamin Franklin beautiful. who thought that the national symbol the national symbol should be a wild turkey mm. there's just something really ma- majestic about it oh ab- absolutely just absolutely. absolutely when we go to Canada we see lots of them yeah lots and lots and lots of them and I'll talk about that more but right now with Jason's help we have the Medal of Honor tribute Honor, courage, and strength of character. These qualities are embodied by the recipients of the Medal of Honor. Now let's recognize this week's Medal of Honor recipient on O'Neill Outside. Colonel James Howard, at the time Lieutenant Colonel, U.S. Army, Germany, 1944. Colonel Howard was a leader of a group of P-51 aircraft providing support for a heavy bomber formation on a long-range mission deep into enemy territory. As Colonel Howard's group met the bombers in the target area, the bomber force was attacked by numerous enemy German fighters. Colonel Howard, with his group, and they at once engaged the enemy and destroyed over uh, several German planes. As a result of the attack, Colonel Howard lost contact with the group, and at once he returned to the level of the bomber formation alone. He then saw that the bombers were being heavily attacked by enemy airplanes and that no other friendly flyers or fighters were at hand. Now, while Colonel Howard could have waited, no. He attacked single-handedly a formation of more than 30 German planes. With other disregard for his own safety, he immediately pressed home determined attacks for some 30 minutes, during which time he destroyed three German airplanes and damaged many others. Toward the end of the engagement, three of his guns were out of action and his fuel supply was becoming dangerously low. Despite these handicaps, And the odds against him, Colonel Howard continued his aggressive action to protect the bombers from the fighters, and he was alone. His skill and courage on this occasion set an example of heroism, which will always be remembered and an inspiration to the U.S. Air Force. Colonel James Howard, Army, 1944. Is he still alive? Uh, to my knowledge, he is. How about that? Yes. Mm-hmm. Continually uh, amazing. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Congressional of Honor recipient, Colonel James Howard. 53 after the hour, almost 54. we got to go to a break here in just a few moments. Uh, we're enjoying the broadcast. I hope you are and that you learn about the outdoors, not from me, but from our callers. Every one of them are deeply engaged in the sport. And we'll be back. Well, another O'Neill Outside Saturday morning live broadcast is in the books. We do appreciate uh, you listening to the program. And those of you who have taken the time to call with questions or statements or help, I certainly do appreciate that. We have a special call from Mike Barr about the wildlife tag. Uh, we always hear from Mac Farr with the Ram Hayes Fishing Report from Henry and from Milton Crabapple and on and on and on, and I hope you enjoy the program. It is kind of one of a kind, and we're proud of that. Uh, This is our 27th year on the air, and it's changed over time, but, you know, 27 years, it must be working at least a little bit. Uh, I guess it's kind of unusual for somebody to get up this early and try to have a radio broadcast. So with great... uh, with great appreciation to Woman Williams and managing the Facebook uh, entries and conversation, if you will, and passing those things along, and to Karen Green and uh, Brian Green down in Peachtree City, Georgia, and Jason Byers, we all welcome and appreciate your efforts at this early in the morning. I've got a big week coming up. i got to tell you, no hunting and no fishing, but I'm going to call this week and visit with a knife manufacturer. Have you ever heard of a, uh, a fellow that I guess you call him, a, I guess he's country or country rock. His name is Zach Brown. And uh, he started a knife company down in Peachtree City, Georgia. 
and I'm going to get to visit with him and with that company this week. Zach Browns, it's called Southern Grind. And these knives are these uh, $150 up knives. Last a lifetime. They're, they're collector's pieces, if you will. So uh, I've got a big week, and uh, it's always a big week here on the side of the mountain. Uh, and we, we look forward to speaking with you guys uh, and ladies every Saturday morning about coyotes and hog hunting, deer fishing, and all of those things. So with that in mind, you keep this in mind. If you're too busy to go fishing or hunting and take a kid along, you're too busy. In Gail, in Karen, Brian, Jason, and O'Neill. We'll see you next week.